I have a fax assembly of the tabernacle right here. That's what we're talking about is the building of that tabernacle and everything in that tabernacle related to Christ. And also, in a secondary way, everything in the tabernacle related to the church in the church age, in the wilderness, so to speak, because this world is a wilderness. We're in the uh, 35th chapter of the book of Wiele Shemot, or Exodus, and God is commanding Moses to get workmen to build their tabernacle. Now Moses was inspired of God to say what he said and to write down what he wrote. Now God is going to inspire these workers and workmen and technicians to do their work. They're going to be heaven-led, so to speak. Heaven-led. Now today, uh, preachers, if you're going to study and preach God's Word, you, you, you've got to learn what it is. You've got to present it in such a way as it is relevant to them and in a way that it is uh, in context. So many preachers, and especially in the charismatic movement, get up and they preach from a verse that may not even be inspired. If you go to the book of Job, some of those things Job's friends said, which weren't inspired, even though the writer was inspired to write them down, those words are not inspired. They were enemies of Job and God. Actually, God got that down on these people. So you got to know the Bible, and that's something you do with the elbow grease and hard study. And if you really want to get down deep into it and present it, in a more reliable way, you need to study Greek and Hebrew. Because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament is written in Greek. And many times uh, Jesus uh, quoted the Septuagint, which was a Greek translation of the Old Testament. So Greek is pretty necessary. If you want to see the violence and the power of the Old Testament, you need to study Hebrew. And that's where we're studying right now. And I'll bring out a lot of things here as I teach the Bible from the Hebrew and not from the translations. So let's get started here. We're going to talk about these inspired technicians and workers uh, guided by, by an inspired man, Moses or Moshe. Moses means to rescue or to draw out. Moshe is how you say it in the Hebrew. Moshe. To rescue or draw out, and God used Moses to rescue his people out of Egypt, out of the world. Then Moses assembled all the congregation of the sons of Israel and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a holy day. A Sabbath complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does does any work on it shall be put to death. That's pretty strong language right there, people. This is part of the law. The Sabbath is part of the law. There was a Sabbath before the law, but there's a Sabbath now that's part of the law. You shall not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. And that word kindling a fire means to keep warm or what else? To cook. Cooked the day before for that today. It's like going out when they gathered the manna, mana. What is it? Mana. Ma means what? In Hebrew, mana means what is it? And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, The Lord has commanded me, and he said this, Take from among you a contribution to the Lord, whoever is willing heart. Let him bring it as the Lord's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze. Now these are the things that gonna, they're going to use to build the tabernacle and all the furnishings. Now today, you ought to tithe to the Lord, to tell you the truth. You ought to tithe, at least tithe. <laughs> Some people do a lot more than tithing. It, it's been my responsibility to do a whole lot more than tithing, keep these 
these messages up and coming to you and building these websites out there. That's more than a tithe. Thank for you for all of you that are out there that have sent uh, offerings. I really appreciate it. There haven't been a lot, but thank you for those that have. And if God puts it on your heart to help support us, please do it. Take from among your contributions to the Lord, whoever is willing heart, let him bring to the Lord's contribution gold, silver, and bronze, and purple, and, and uh, blue, and scarlet material from fine linen, goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and porpoise skins, and acacia wood. The acacia wood is this gopher wood business. That is a, a wood that has got a lot of pitch in it. It doesn't rot. It's like redwood or cedar or whatever. And oil for lighting and spices for anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. Oil for lighting is olive oil. Oil for lighting is olive oil. I know that they chased uh, whales from one pole to the other and would render their fat and use that for oil and for uh, lubricating oil, etc., 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 for many, many years. But here, olive oil is the medicine. Olive oil is an ointment. They ate it. They put it on their bodies, and they used it for ceremonial services like here. Now, one doctor says that a person ought to drink one liter of olive oil a week of what we call extra virgin organic olive oil, one liter a week. It's really good for you in many, many ways. I tried it to, to use olive oil, whatever I cook with, I use olive oil, and then if I eat bread at all, I'm going to dip it in olive oil and not butter. With a little bit of went vinegar with it, <laughs> a little bit of balsamic or red wine vinegar and spices. Olive oil is good for you, by the way. Oil for lighting and spices for the anointing oil and for fragrant incense and onyx stones and setting stones for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let every skillful man among you come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Now these people, when they went out looking for these things, some of them they brought out of Egypt, but God would just open their eyes to these precious metals and precious stones also. They robbed Egypt in a lot of ways. The Egypt robbed them for 400 years but without paying to them for them, but when Israel left God, left Israel, or Egypt that is, God allowed them to take from those people. To pay for their wages. That every skillful man among you come and make all that the Lord has commanded. And these people were skillful by inspiration, naturally. Now, <clears throat> I've been a mechanic almost all my life, from <laughs> seven or eight years old or something like that. I was welding and driving a car and everything from the time to seven. That's what you did back in the old days. You know, I cowboyed up here in this land here and roped and mustang, which means I caught wild mustangs and I trained them and we made cow ponies out of them, etc. I did that from the time I was seven years old. And you know what? Everybody, every other boy did it too. That's what was expected of you in those days. You just did it. You learned how to drive when you were little. Remember out on the farm, the Banjuchi boys, Maryland? Mm -hmm. They had to have a, a box or something or fellows to set on the tractors and drive the tractors. Mm -hmm. Drove the tractors from the time they were very young. I did the same thing. I learned how to drive, first of all, a tractor going up and down the roads in Fish Lake Valley the time I was seven years old and onward. I was expected to do that. I did it. Not I didn't want to. I did it because it was expected of me. Now I had to learn all those things. I had to learn to rope. I had to learn to saddle a horse. I had to learn to gentle a horse. I had to learn to shoe a horse. All these things I had to learn how to do. <clears throat> I doctored horses and medicated them and doctored cattle and whatever. It was something you had to do. You would, couldn't call a veterinarian from from 75 miles away in the 1950s when. Going 75 miles was an absolute expedition in those old cars in those days. 
these people were inspired. You know, I worked for Ace Hydraulic and I worked for Sully and Son Hydraulic and I taught people how to do mechanics. And some of them was not easy at all. I know when I started teaching my son to be a mechanic, it didn't seem like he was a natural mechanic at all. But when he learned, he finally learned, he's a fantastic mechanic now. My oldest boy. Some people catch on fast, some people are very slow. That's just the way it is. But when you're inspired, it's natural. And let every skillful man among you come and make all that the Lord has commanded and the tabernacle and its tent and its covering, its hooks and its boards and its bars and its pillars and its sockets. And the tabernacle there is the meeting place, by the way. The tabernacle is a meeting place. When we come to meet God today, we meet Him in the ecclesias, the places where God has, where the assemblies are. When God has a little assembly, our little assembly here is Discover the Word Missionary Baptist Church in Fish Lake Valley. We're meeting here even this evening. The ark and its poles and the mercy seat and the curtain of the screen and the table and its poles and all its utensils and the bread of the presence, that's the, the show bread. That's the 12 loaves of bread they put in there, all representing each of the tribe, each tribe of Israel. Always in the presence of God. And the lampstand for the light and its utensils and its lamps and for oil and for the light. And the altar of incense and its poles and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense and the screen for the doorway at the entrance of the tabernacle. The altar of the burnt offering with its bronze grating and its poles and all its utensils and basins and its stand. The hangings of the court, that's out here, out here in the court, the curtain that goes around the hangings of the court, its pillars, its sockets, and the screen for the gate of the court. That's that pretty screen over here, where you walk through the screen into the court. You're walking into a type of the presence of God and royalty. And in the presence of the Savior of God. The altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating and its poles and all the utensils, the basin that it stands and the hangings of the court, its pillars and its sockets and the screen for the gate of the court and the pegs and the tabernacle and the pegs of the court and their cords. That cords there is the ropes. The woven garments for ministering in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of the sons to minister as priests. Now, you see the high priest sitting here, also are standing there. That's what they're talking about, their holy garments. All of that stood about some work of Christ. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel departed from Moses' presence, and they got with it. And everyone whose heart stirred him, and everyone, that word heart stirred him there, that means they were inspired, they were led by the Spirit of God. Whose Spirit moved him, come and brought the Lord's contribution for the work of the tent meeting, and for all its service, and for the holy garments. People give because God stirs them to do that. People give because God stirs them to do that. Even today, you out there all the work. When you give, God is inspiring you to do that. He's urging you to do that. That all the hearts moved them, both men and women, and came and brought brooches and earrings. They still have more earrings and nose rings too, by the way. In the Hebrew it says nose rings. And uh, uh, heirlooms, signet rings. Heirlooms, signet rings was from the patriarchs. Every patriarch had a signet ring. And they're bringing all this stuff before the Lord. And bracelets and all articles of gold, so did every man who presented an offering to gold to the Lord. Now I wish I had this problem. Because Moses had to tell him to quit bringing that he had more than he needed. I don't think we're going to get enough, too much money to, to be overflowing at discovertheword.com and the ministries. Everyone who could make a congregation of silver and bronze brought the Lord's congregation. Every man who had his possession, in case you would, for any work of the service, brought it. And all the skilled women 
spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet and material of fine linen. These people were all inspired of God to do this. And all the women whose heart stirred with skill upon the goat's hair. And the rulers brought the onyx stones and for setting and the ephod and for the breastplate. These are precious stones now. And the spice and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. And the Israelites and all the men and women whose heart moved them to bring material for all the work which the Lord had commanded through Moses to be done brought a free will offering to the Lord. A free will offering. They weren't commanded to do this. This is a free will offering. Thank God for free will offerings, huh? Then Moses said to the sons of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Beziel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and all the craftsmanship, to make designs for working in gold and in silver and in bronze, and in the cutting of stones and for settings, and carving of wood, so as to perform every inventive work inspired workmen. God inspired them. And we have an inspired leader. He also put in the heart to teach both he and Aholanib, the son of Ashimach, of the tribe of Dan. And he has filled them with the skill to perform every work. Inspired workmen. Inspired workmen of an engraver and a designer and embroidery and in blue and in purple and in scarlet material and in fine linen and a weaver as performers of every work and makers of design. Every person was inspired by God. Because this was going to be something that would even be with us today. That tabernacle is an inspired work of God typifying the Lord Jesus Christ that was to come. All, every sacrifice was a type of Jesus giving his life, of God paying for your salvation and giving you eternal life for free to you but not to him. Our Father, we send this message out today for your honor and your glory. Please use it touch people's lives wherever they are, inspire them to serve you, to give to you, to witness for you, to learn, and to pass it on. Please forgive me where I failed you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.